Welcome to the SoCal Sports Complex in Oceanside, California for match day one of the U16-17 U.S. Soccer Development Academy playoffs. We are coming to you from Group B where the number five seed United Football Academy out of Norcross, Georgia is getting set to take on the number 26 seed in Sporting Kansas City. Players getting ready to make their way out onto the field for the 2018-19 playoffs. Oh. United Football Academy were the Southeast Division champions and finishing with the fifth best record in the Development Academy with a string of 21 wins, six losses, and one draw, 58 goals for, and 32 goals against. Well, Sporting Kansas City finished fourth in the Frontier Division, 12-9-2 with 31 goals for, and 34 goals against to claim the sixth wild card spot. So Sporting Kansas City comes out in their traditional strip. Well, United Football Academy is in their red jerseys with white trim, black shorts, and black socks. We are getting ready here on the second day of the U.S. Soccer Development Academy playoffs and showcase. This one of 667 so. games across the Boys and Girls Development Academy over the next two weeks here in Oceanside. The U18-19s got us underway yesterday with their first group day of group play. And today, the 16-17s, their playoff matches as well as the showcase games for the teams that did not make the top 32 teams. Also this year, for the first time, there is a U15 division for the boys. And here are the U16-17 level. Eight groups of four for the 32 teams. Only the group winners go through to the quarterfinals, which will be played on June 25th. This is so important that you get all three points on match day one and get yourself off to a good start. Otherwise, you most likely not only have to take six points from your last two games, but have to rely on other teams as well. It's the other two teams in Group B is FC United SC and Strikers FC. And they are playing today as well in the other match at Group B. So we are going to step aside and listen to the playing of our national anthem, and then we'll have kickoff. Both of these teams coming into the playoffs on winning runs. Sporting Kansas City has won their last two games, finishing with victories over Solar 1-0 and the Dallas Texans by the same scoreline. Before United Football Academy, they won their last 10 games to finish the season. Have to go all the way back to March 3rd to find their last loss. It was a 3-2 reverse against Orlando City. So both teams hoping to continue their winning form into these playoffs. United Football Academy has been on a tear. Sporting Kansas City, one of the youngest sides in this U16-17 Development Academy. Today, for instance, they are starting 703s and 104 here in the 0203 age group. And that is something that has been their MO, starting younger players and playing them up. 
303s play with the U17 since January 104 with the 17s. 12 players from the 17s have played up with the 19s as well. Well, four of the 19s have made their pro debut with Swope Park Rangers sporting Kansas City's USL championship side. And in the lineup tonight, wearing number nine, Tyler Freeman, the 16 year old who was signed to a homegrown contract in October of 2018 at the age of 15. And featured for them having two goals for SKC in preseason, he's out there. And here's one of the younger players, Osvaldo Cisneros, the 2004 out of Omaha, Nebraska, who just returned from US Youth National Team duty in Italy. As we are underway, United Football Academy against Sporting Kansas City in Group B of the U16-17 playoffs. And right away, a bit of trouble, but it's cleared by Gavin Kronecki. As this goes out of bounds, and it will be a throw in for United Football Academy and Johan Cabrera. Gets it inside for Colin Thomas. Main goes up and misses the header. And Sporting Kansas City looks to fashion their first attack. This is Freeman, able to spin. Gets it out wide for Mendy. Mendy cuts inside, gets by one, couldn't get by the second, now has to go back with it. And the layoff is intercepted. One back by Lepley. And now Mendy looking to run again. Unable to get by Ferreira, who clears. Pierre is there to mop up for Sporting KC. Inside for Davis. Davis attended preseason with the MLS team. So it's one back by Davis, who also has two appearances for Swole Park Rangers. Cisneros gets it back for Davis. He'll roll it along to Pierre. Cross for Hooper. Light pressure being applied by Franks. Hooper steps in front of it. And Kobe Jones gets it inside for Davis. Escapes the attention of Franks. As it's patience from SKC. Clipped in by Hooper. And Jones is whistled for offsides. Quickly taken for Colin Thomas. And he'll get it back for Gudino. Across for Riley Thomas, who's heading to UNC to play his college ball. Riley Thomas, the captain of this team. Head coach Robin Dixon saying he's not only been a mainstay for us, but he's a leader. Moved to center back just this season. Played through, looking for the rung of Thomas. Cut out by Hooper. And intercepted by Gudino. Into the middle for Maine. Gets it off to Slavlov. Slavov from Charlestown, West Virginia. Head coach Robin Dixon saying that He's very decisive and excellent at connecting with players higher up the field. So look for him to be the link between defense and attack, the number 24 for United Football Academy. As Huth gets it inside for Maine, but he played the return ball behind him and Cisneros overtakes. Just flip your mic up, it'll mute itself. Sporting Kansas City has signed nine Academy players to homegrown contracts. Last year alone, Luca Busio, Jalen Lindsay, and Juan Cousin all debuted with the first team. Head coach Rumbani Munthali told me last year and said that it still rings true that the short term goal is that in the next few years to have Swole Park Rangers field a starting 11 entirely of academy players, and in the future, they want the very same for the MLS side. This is an attack-minded and possession-based team that tries to dictate the game, and they're doing so early on. And these two teams actually met in a friendly back in October. And Robin Dixon said that his United Football Academy side played very well against them, but that SKC had just played the day before. And 
that with different players and now the system he said they didn't even go back and look at the tape of that game because there's no reason to this is a whole new sporting kansas city side that has really grown in confidence and won a lot of important games down the stretch to make their way into these playoffs of course scouted a lot of other skc games just not that friendly all the way back in october as lefley intercepts the clearance and he gets it back to hooper Cooper, like many of these players, has trained both with Swole Park Rangers and Sporting Kansas City. He's also been in the game day AT for Swole Park, although he hasn't made his USL Championship debut yet, Hooper. Lepley, Davis. Love the way that Davis gets the ball and then looks for a new pocket of space to receive it in. Lepley. He'll turn and get it back for Hooper. Shawnee, Kansas native, with a long diagonal ball to the far side. Beautifully bought down. Mendy was unable to find the return pass looking for Lennis. And it's Maine to go the other way. Able to skip by the challenge of Cisneros. And out for Colin Thomas. Thomas rides the challenge from Jones. And we'll get it off to the far side. Ferreira is making the overlap. Suzukaris. Inside for Slavov. Gudino. Aspro Slavov. Has nine goals this season, Slavov. As Thomas. Was wrestled to the ground. No fouls as the referee. And it's Mendy to go the other way for Sporting Kansas City. Jones venturing forward. Looks for the early cross in the box. And the header right into the arms of Ryan Sheaway. He's making his 17th start of the season. Sheaway joined just this spring from Atlanta United. His 17th start since. Zucaris dispossessed. And Jones will play it all the way back to his keeper as Sporting Kansas City will re hit the reset button in the eighth minute. As Kronecki will get it back. Another player who's trained both with SPR and SKC's MLS team. He's also started two games for the U19, Kronecki. ball over the head of Zakaris as he bumped into Jones. One by Goddard. Goddard down the line for Freeman. And here comes the homegrown signing Freeman. Freeman works it onto his left foot. Still holding it on his right. He's looking to cut back. Now he's able to get the cross. It's a dangerous ball to the back post. Mendy arriving. Just can't keep his effort down. But it took a deflection on the way. And it's the first corner kick of the game. And it goes the way of the MLS side. It was good work from Freeman. I thought he had a window of opportunity to take a shot on his left foot, albeit from a very tight angle was still able to create something. And from there, SKC have their first corner. Cleared right back out. Sent to the back post, but up is Shueyway. He dropped it, and the whistle goes before Freeman could start to celebrate what he thought would have been a fair goal. So it remains nil-nil in the 10th minute. And 
Shayway will take the free kick. Scott Freeman thought he had one of the easiest goals he would have ever scored in his career. He's just come back from injury. And the idea was to bring him here for these 16, 17 playoffs to get him minutes so that he can get physically ready for the summer where he's gonna spend the majority of his time with Swope Park Rangers as well as the MLS side and the first team for SKC. And so this really is an assignment to bring him back to full fitness after his injury. This is Thomas yeah, on the far side. Yeah, we can do that if we wanted to. Zakaris' pass is picked off. Mendy still battling for it. Thomas is able to get it clear. Nobody down the line in a red jersey, though. I'll get the shot real quick. And back to tidy up is Pierre. Over to Hooper. Good movement from side to side from Sporting. Cooper going forward. Into the pass of Goddard. Slid away by Cabrera. Thomas back helping to defend. And into the middle for Lepley who will leave it off for Pierre. Caden Pierre gets it off for Dylan Hooper. Davis. Lennis. Lennis steps inside of Huth and gives it off to Davis. He escapes the attention of Savlov. I see Sneros with a chance to run. Working in the channel against Maine. We'll spin away from Maine and get it back out wide for Lennis. Lennis lost it, but Cisneros is there to rescue the situation. And in for Freeman, whose touch was just a bit too heavy, but it's a good idea. Sporting Kansas City has been on the front foot in the opening 11 plus minutes of this game. And Sheaway sends it long, looking for Franks. First to it is Hooper. One by Cabrera. Thomas forced back with it. Savlov chasing. Hooper gets it back from Jones. And Savlov looking behind him saying, hey, if I'm coming up high, why isn't the next line of the midfield pushing up higher? Well, Frank obliges and he wins it back on the far side and he's bought down. Uh, it looks like this is going to be on the ground rather than a throw-in. So free kick for UFA. Gudino. Huth. Main dispossessed. Played for Goddard. Goddard running at Cabrera. Gets it on the left foot and slots in the opening goal for Sporting Kansas City. Lovely solo effort from Goddard. The 16 17 is over to celebrate with the 18-19. It's well, he ran a long way with this ball, Goddard. They didn't close him down. And a composed finish from the St. Louis, Missouri native. And SKC have the one nothing lead. Danny Goddard with his third of the season. Well, I love how they celebrate as an academy. The joy of scoring in the U.S. Soccer Development Academy playoffs on full display there 
as it's Sporting Kansas City one, UFA nil. I think the defense needed to challenge him higher up the pitch as Thomas is running, ooh, and the keeper fell and was able to get to the ball. Nervous moments for Konecki, who joined this season from the Sacramento Republic. Yes, I understand that a little bit. Looks to be okay though, Konecki, just lost his footing. Robin Dixon wants his side to press higher up. And now they oblige, Kronecki turns and sends it to the far side. Zakaris battling with Lennis and he's whistled for the foul. talked about the fact that Sporting Kansas City's U18 19s are in attendance. Tomorrow we'll bring you two matches from match day two of the U18 19 playoffs. As the high press comes in from Sporting Kansas City. And almost made it come to fruition. Tomorrow at 2.30 Pacific, the Soccers take on Philadelphia Union in Group F, followed by the New England Revolution versus St. Louis FC at 5.30 in Group A. So those are the two games tomorrow. And now the high press paying dividends for UFA as they win it back and have a chance to attack. This is a team that when they have the ball, their movement is really exquisite. Their midfield three especially interchange positions fluidly in order to create triangles and circulate the ball. They also really like to open up either the channels or the flanks and attack those areas to get a lot of services in. It's a team that likes to play on the edge of the field and in their front three and their midfield three, they have players that are very capable of changing around and switching positions in order to create those openings. But so far it's been all about defending here. This is going to be off of Goddard last, and it will be a throw-in for UFA. Quickly taken into the feet of Gudino. In for Franks. And Franks just given no time on the ball. Mendy looking to run. Silky footwork from Mendy. Not a bad idea to pull the trigger, but it was too close to Ryan Sheaway. Huth. Jones draped all over him as Huth gets it back. And Huth unable to control it. So it'll be a throne for Kobe Jones. Getting his eighth start of the season. Just 15 years old. As Hooper gets it across for Caden Pierre. The Rochester Hills Michigan native tried to play it forward. Hooper. Long ball looking for the run of Mendy. Uh, it's been a good battle so far between him and Ferreira over on the far side. Oh, 
Slipped inside for Goddard. Onto the left foot, and his shot is blocked. Oh, Goddard, it's been really dangerous early on. Whether it's been getting the ball out on the wing and then attacking or coming inside to receive the ball towards the top of the box. Goddard, the goal scorer, will get it back. Hooper. And now he'll find Pierre. Oh, loose touch from him. Zukaris could be off, but well off his line to mop up is Kronecki. Lepley out wide for Mendy. Oh, and Mendy slipped as he was trying to cut inside. Oh, unlucky for Edward Mendy, who has three goals in 20 appearances coming into this one this season after joining from the Charlotte Soccer Academy. Cisneros wins it. Huth gets back to regain possession for UFA. Cabrera. Into Thomas. Now Thomas will get it off for Maine. Out to the far side for Zakaris. Top of the box for Savlov. Maine. Out wide for Ferreira. Thought about measuring across. Instead, we'll get it back to Savlov, who will leave it off for Huth. Huth now has an area to run into, and he'll sweep it out wide for Cabrera. And now patience being shown by UFA as they look to cycle the ball around. But overrunning it is Gudino, and now Freeman is 1v1, working against Thomas. And Gudino gets back to supply the double team. And good hold up play by Freeman as he leaves it off for Goddard. Goddard drives it to the far side. Almost inch perfect for Mendy, but it's headed away by Ferreira. And Zucaris comes back to pick up the loose ball. Franks, a oh, lovely trap and pass from him. Yeah, I'm trying to figure that out. Right Foul now. conceded by Savlov. So at the midway point of this first half, 1-0 SKC leads UFA on a goal from Daniel Goddard in the 14th minute. You got me. Got me now. Perhaps SKC have a chance to grab another one here. This one from the free kick. Seen them shot from here, but this most likely will be something dinked into the box. Look for it to be either dropped right on that penalty spot or toward the back corner to six. Perhaps we're gonna see something from the training ground. Freeman takes off into the space. It's being watched by Maine. And Freeman wins the second corner kick of the game for Sporting. So he's gonna leave this one off for Lepley. low for Freeman, quickly played right back out to Lepley. Lepley looking to measure across, coming out of Sheaway. Jones with the interception. Cisneros. P. 
Pierre. Kurnecki. Now they look to squeeze. And the outlet ball comes over to Jones. Plays it in the middle, but it's intercepted by Maine. And Franks with the effort into the arms of Kurnecki. That's the first shot on goal for Uf at UFA. Huth providing the pressure. And Hooper drives it through. Gudano, Cabrera will roll it into the feet of Riley Thomas. The future Tar Heel will leave it off for Slavov. And he's being hounded by Davis and will win the free kick. Quickly taken for Slavov. Huth wants it in the center. Instead, it's going to come back to Maine. Freeman is out, the flag is up though. So it'll be offsides. Uh, good look though on that early run for Freeman, but the back line of UFA was wise to it. Quickly taken, or at Maine. Inside for Huth. Jacob Huth in just his first season in the DA. Robin Dixon saying that he made incredible slides, or strides rather, Let's get back to that in a second. As it falls to the feet of Maine. Oh, he hesitated just a bit. Zucaris slides it looking for Colin Thomas. Thomas unable to get to it in time. But getting back to Huth, just his first season in the DA, and this is 27th appearance. Robin Dixon saying that he's made incredible strides this season and that his soccer IQ is out of this world. Uh, Colin Thomas, who's chasing it down, he was a game time decision because he's been suffering with a hip flexor injury. And Coach Robin Dixon saying that Colin Thomas is really huge for US Pay and what he brings to the club. that for a ball from Hooper looking for Mendy and he fouled Ferreira who was trying to bring that down a ball hung up in the air just a little bit but you love center backs that can play those diagonal balls you go over to, to the girls side in the women's world cup and that's exactly what Abby Dahlkamper does for the US in the center of defense you just pick up a ball and spray that diagonal to either an outside back or a winger who's making that run down the wing, about 75, 80 yards. One of the, especially to beat compact teams. He's Danny Goddard. Doesn't allow UFA out of their defensive end, but it will be a throw in for the Georgia side. Scudino leaves it off for his keeper. Sheaway will get it across for Thomas. Looking long for Zucaris. Pierre beats him to the punch and gets it back to his keeper in Kronecki. Off for Hooper. Pass gifts the ball back to UFA. I think the biggest thing at the moment is that UFA is pressing. The lines are just not all together on their press. Sometimes the forward will press in the midfield a bit too far behind, but it's been getting better as the game's gone on. And it's because of that you start to see them having more and more possession. 
And one of the things that Robin Dixon said about his side and what they've been focusing on is, if a line gets broken, how do they get back and repair those lines? And they're certainly getting a chance to work on that today against this, the city side that has been very good moving the ball around. Savlov battling with Mendy on the far side. And that will be a throw in for UFA. And Gudino closed down by Freeman. Freeman forcing Gudino to go all the way back to Sheway. Out for Thomas, he's closed down by Cisneros. Thomas just so calm under pressure. You understand why he was moved back to that central back position so that UFA would have somebody through which they could build out of the back. But it's lost in midfield. Here comes Sporting Kansas City once again and they win a free kick. So just past the half hour mark in Oceanside, and it's Sporting Kansas City with the ball and the lead. Goal coming in the 14th minute off the boot of Danny Goddard after he picked the ball up just inside the attacking half and ran all the way into the box before cutting it back onto his right foot and slotting it into the far corner. Sporting has had a couple of these set pieces. Well, the last one, they tried to play quickly along the ground out wide. This one, they're gonna tease into the mix. So it's played in, and a gorgeous header from Hooper. Perfectly measured, leaving Sheway rooted to his line. And Sporting Kansas City have a 2-0 lead. Perfect delivery and the header to match. Look at him just get up and steering it toward the far post into the side netting and it's time to celebrate once again. Get that assistant referee out of the way. So what will the response be from UFA? Huth on the far side. Thomas stepping into the midfield. Gudino, the call from the bench is quicker, quicker. And Goddard once again applying the pressure, forcing Cabrera into a mistake. with the throw in. Thomas brings it forward for UFA. A bit too far for Ferreira on the far side. Lapley. One by Huth. Huth wants to take it quickly. Has only Franks in front of him. We'll get it back for Maine. Uh, for the first time in the first two days in Oceanside, we finally see the sun. Shining brightest on Sporting Kansas City at the moment as they have the two nothing lead in the 34th minute. But these teams finally treated to that California weather. Savlov, Huth, Rolls it out wide for Zakaris. Zakaris darts into the box and wins the first corner kick of the game for UFA. Well, Zakaris, such a creative player. 
Robin Dixon saying that he creates great sequences and his movement off the ball is excellent. And he's able to fashion the first corner kick of the afternoon for UFA. What can they do with it as Frank splits it into the box just over the head of Cabrera? And it will roll out for a sporting throw in. Reminder after this to watch the USA in its Gold Cup opener tonight. 43 players who played in the Development Academy have gone on to represent the US senior side. On a collision of bodies there. Uh, it's going to go out for UFA throwing in for Savlov. And he's bundled into from behind by Davis. Davis showing his frustration. He's going to have to be careful. And so now Davis being called over by the referee and just told to calm down. You can't have all those histrionics. You can't keep gesturing, especially when the referee has already called you over. Well, it's good reffing from Islan Pexenar out of South Carolina. Understands that it's a game full of emotions and kind of lets Davis cool down a bit. No need to show a card. Sporting Kansas City with the ball in the 37th minute. Want to give a quick shout out to Carter Augustine, who's the sideline reporter for Sporting Kansas City and the play-by-play -play man for Swole Park Rangers. He joined us last year for the semifinals and the finals, which were held at the Swope Soccer Village. And of course, as you'd expect, or if you're from Kansas City, you already know, he did an amazing job. And now the press comes from Cisneros. Main steps into the pocket and tries to thread it through for Zucaris. Zucaros has the beating of his man. Still going, Zucaris! Oh, that's the best move of the game from United Football Academy. That Zucaris had the right idea by picking out the far post. His shot just over. They did such a good job to hold off the challenge of Caden Pierre. And the ball bounced up on him at just the last second as he went to take it. But Kronecki was beaten. Oh, how that would have changed the complexion of this game as we inch toward halftime. Stoppage in play. Well, another ball is bought on. It's the last ball left the premises of the stadium. One back by Mendy on the far side. And Davis wins the free kick.
Brought down on the chest by Cabrera. Jones able to come away with it. Eros is run into the center. Puts it into the channel for Goddard. This is the exact type of run which he scored last time. He's bought down just outside the box from Gudano. Well, that was a meaty challenge and Goddard still down. Goddard taking off the Gudano coming across and leaves his feet. Still think Gudano had the angle to get over and cover. And instead lunged after the ball. And Sanders coming. A free kick from an awkward angle, but still a very dangerous position anytime it's in and around the box. Especially when you consider that, that Sporting Kansas City scored on its last set piece. As far away as my Goddard is up and walking around even though the trainer has been called out. The trainer's asking, why'd you call me on if Goddard's okay? And now because the trainer came on, Goddard has to go out and wait for permission to come back in. So Goddard's gonna have to come off just for a second. Freeman's over this ball, as is Lepley. And now Freeman leaves it. So it's Lepley and Davis. It'd be Lepley on the left or Davis on the right. And if it is Davis, maybe he tries to catch him at the near post. Davis goes toward the far, and it's headed away by Thomas. Corner kick for SKC. So Goddard waved back on and we're back to 11 v 11. Sporting Kansas City have their third corner kick of the afternoon. <laughs> Lovely service. Nodded away. Frank's beaten to it. And Cisneros gets it back for Lennis. Ooh, and Lennis in a bit of trouble. Savlov gets to the loose ball, ran into Maine. Still Savlov threads it through. And Franks has pulled one back for UFA. A mistake at the back. And the momentum shifts just before halftime. Franks has hardly been involved, but when they needed him most, he pops up and takes his chance for his 14th goal of the season. It was Franks who won it, and Savlov who fed him. One touch to settle, and another to drive it beyond Kronecki in the Sporting Kansas City goal. And it's game on again in Oceanside. <laughs> Long ball looking for Franks. He's got to step on Pierre. Franks arrows into the penalty box, pulls it back. Colin Thomas still going for it. It was touched away just before he could get there and swept clear with Cabrera lurking. Well, this is more like UFA. And a player down behind the play. I believe it's Colin Thomas. Thomas, who's just coming back from a hip flexor injury. So you hope that's not what it is. He looks to be all right. Well, that's good news for UFAs. Frank's coming in, pulling it back, is just behind Thomas. Uh, still continuing to fight for it. 
and you could see Kobe Jones get a touch just as Thomas was cranking his foot back for the equalizer. Freeman through the legs of Riley Thomas. Waits for Mendy to take off down the line. Now he looks to find him. Gets inside of Ferreira. Mendy twisting, turning, and winning a corner kick as it was a good recovery from Gudino. He had fallen but was still able to get back up. But incredible footwork from Edward Mendy. There'll be three minutes of time added on. And Sporting Kansas City with their fourth corner kick of the game, a chance to retake the two goal lead before halftime. Thomas gets there first. Zukaris takes off one on two. And we'll leave it back for Huth. Cabrera did well to chase it down. Slavov gets it back. Gudina looking over the top. One back by Maine. And they're going to call a free kick. Cooper goes back with it. And it's a chance for UFA to press higher. Fought down on the chest by Goddard. He's had an excellent first half. This time Cabrera gets the better of him. Thomas skips by Jones. And we'll leave it off for his namesake. Huth. In for Maine. And Cisnero steps in front of him. Maine uses his body to win it back, but it's too far for Zakaris on the far side. As we're into the final of the three minutes minimum of stoppage time in this first half, it was all sporting Kansas City till a mistake in the back. Franks won the ball, gave it off to Slavov, who returned the favor. And Franks has totally changed the complexion of this game as we head into halftime. One back high up the field. Franks with the reverse ball in for Zakaris. Zakaris stops on the end line, picks his head up, is waiting for the run. Now he's found it. And Huth still going Huth. Oh, somehow he was able to squeeze his way through but just couldn't get the shot off. And that's most likely the last chance of the first half. Two-one Sporting Kansas City lead UFA at halftime, but UFA will be the happier side walking off at the moment as they pulled one back just before half. Goddard opened the scoring with a lovely solo effort in the 14th minute. Hooper came out from a center back position to score off a header just after the half hour mark, but with two minutes before halftime, Franks getting a lifeline for UFA, and it's still all to play for as we head into the final 45 minutes. At the break, it's United Football Academy 1, Sporting Kansas City 2.
2-1 as we're on the verge for the second half kickoff, and this is how we got here. Goddard running straight at the heart of the defense, gets around his man and steers it to the far post. And then Sporting Kansas City would win a free kick for that tug of the jersey right there from Colin Thomas. The ball was sent in, and Hooper with a gorgeously measured header. Absolutely nothing the keeper could do. And it was time to celebrate once again. And Sporting Kansas City looked to be firmly in the driver's seat heading into halftime until this giveaway. And then Slavov would slide the ball back to Franks and the man who started the move would finish it. And it sets up a whole different complexion to this second half as it's still all to play for heading into the final 45 minutes of match day one here on U.S. Soccer and U.S. Soccer Development Academy's Facebook page. Robert Huth has been good in the center of midfield for UFA. As has Colin Thomas. No changes to tell you about at halftime. Kranicki wants no more mistakes in the back from his sporting side. Still have the two to one lead. And it's Freeman who's over the ball. So Freeman will get the second half underway just waiting for the whistle of the referee. Islin Pexinar blows his whistle. The final 45 minutes between UFA and Sporting Kansas City are underway. It took UFA a bit of time to grow into the game. They were on the front foot heading into halftime. Can they continue to keep up that momentum here at the start of the second half? As this will be a throw in for Aiden Ferreira. Ferreira sends it long. Headed back by Lepley. Ludino. Aaron pass picked off by Danny Goddard. Score of the first goal. Into the feet of Franks. He brings it down at the second time of asking. Able to turn. Slides it through. And cleared away by Hooper before Thomas could latch onto it. They want to pressure higher, and the first two went, but nobody came to get on Mendy, and he's able to receive the ball. Now they get there and close him down. Mendy somehow able to get by them, and he walks the tightrope along the touchline and leaves it off for Freeman, who's brought to ground by Aiden Ferreira, but no foul called as UFA go the other way. Guidano, while Silky moved to sidestep Lepley. And Franks lets it run on to Thomas on the far side. Correction, Huth who spins. Huth into Maine. Ferreira joins the party. Wasn't really able to get forward in the first half. A bit more here. All 10 outfield players in the attacking half for UFA as they press for an equalizer. Flicked on by Huth, was looking for the return ball. Thomas. Good work by Slavov not to give up the ball under pressure. Cabrera. It's a good run. Left off for Franks. Ferreira. Thomas steps in front of Mendy. Over for Huth. Franks. And here you see the interchanging of positions from UFA that we talked about. Slid inside for Zucaris and cleared by Caden Pierre. But this is the kind of game that UFA wants to play. And the fluid movement. And the offside flag is up.
So it'll be a free kick for Caden Pierre. Last year was in the U15 national team pool. Pierre rather misheard that, but Mendy is able to keep it in bounds. However, his header goes right to Slavov, who's the architect of the goal for UFA. Back to Maine. Thomas rolls it into the feet of Zakaris. Zakaris had his jersey held and referee letting them play. And now the counterattack could be on for Sporting. It's three on four if they can hurry, but the ball will go all the way through for Sheaway. Here's a chance once again to press. That's this one over the head of Thomas though. Ed Pereira gets there before Mendy. Into the feet of Zakaris, loses out to Pierre. Cisneros with a little bit of space to operate. Playing a high line, Freeman wants to break it. Ed Thomas saw the danger. Lepley gets it back, and Hooper will leave it off for Jones. Kronecki. Pierre. Flips it over, looking for Mendy. Loose touch, and it will be a throw in for UFA. UFA have really grown in possession here in the second half. Thomas looking for Zakaris. Able to get it back to Slavov. Quick one two with Huth. Back for Huth. Huth gets away from Hooper and leaves it off for Maine. Out ride for Cabrera. Back to Huth. Slavov cycles. Riley Thomas asking for it, gets it, and quick switch of the field to Ferreira. He's looking to set the table. Over hit the cross. And now Goddard on the far side, lovely little flick to himself, and he gets it back to Jones. And Jones ran himself out of bounds, so it'll be a throw in for UFA. And rather popped it over Huth. Now he's looking to atone for his error as he continues with his pressure and he gets it off the feet of Lennis. That's tremendous work from Maine. So many players make a bad ball like that and then just lunge into the next challenge out of desperation. Oh, and look at that for a move from Slava. Space for Zakaris, but he's offside. Unable to get past the double team. Ferreira gets it inside for Maine. Maine picks up his head, slides it through for Franks. Just couldn't get the touch on it to bring it under control. They're starting to make inroads though, UFA, but now they have to get back as the counter is on for SKC. Forward for Freeman, but Guidino gets there first. And then out of bounds from Lepley. Slavov. And they'll work it around the back. <laughs> I 
Uh, Robin Dixon said that going into this, the mental phase of their preparation was all about enjoyment, enjoying the moment, the fact that they get to be here and compete. They certainly look to be enjoying themselves now, but Franks left the starting gate just a bit too soon. Well, the bench didn't agree with it. But it will be a free kick for Sporting Kansas City. Robin Dixon, former Wake Forest player, shaking his head. Rye smile for the fourth official, too, from head coach Robin Dixon. But whatever he said to his team at halftime, it's working. Sakaris. Gets it back for Ferreira. And pinged into the feet of Huth. Couldn't bring it under control. So the throw and taken by Lennis. Cisneros. Over the top for Freeman. Flag stays down. Oh, and Huth's pass. Falls right to the feet of Cisneros. Helps it on to Davis. Left back for Lepley. He'll flight it to the far side for Goddard. Brings it down and loops it across. But there are no takers in a light blue jersey. Now Mendy arrives, but not before it's cleared away. Zucaris. Oh, there's that artistry that Dixon talked about in Thomas Zucaris. As Lepley will leave this throwing off for Lennis. Michael Lennis, U15 youth national team player. Slavov. Forward for Colin Thomas. Trying to get by Pierre, who wins the battle. Huth intercepts Kronecki's clearance. Huth cuts it back onto his left. And Pierre skies his clearance. Punch forward by Slavov. Thomas is in, and Kronecki out to make the save. Tremendous goalkeeping from Kronecki. Lennis saunters forward. Mendy beats Ferreira. Uh, he pushes it across. Goddard seizes on the loose ball. Tigers work by Thomas to win it, but it falls for Mendy. Inside for Freeman. Freeman wants to run, still going Freeman, and it's slid away by Gudino. And then safety first from Thomas. Gavin Kronecki reading the game so well, coming off his line anticipation. Otherwise, Colin Thomas would have been in all the way out to the extreme of his penalty area to make that save. And there's a player down. Looks to be Ferreira after that last challenge with Edward Mendy. Aiden Ferreira, 17-year-old out of Canton, Georgia. He's had a good battle with Mendy up and down the flanks this afternoon. Ferreira's also played three games for the 18-19s for UFA. And I think part of the reason they've been more dangerous is he's ventured further forward in this second half. Looks like maybe he just got a, a dead leg and took a knock right into the quad, which is never delightful. Looks like he's just gonna try and walk this one off though. And Kronecki staying loose at the other end. And now the throw 
one to be taken by Freeman. He sportingly gives it back. And Thomas will give the ball to his keeper for the goal kick. Rubani Munthali wants to make a double change for Sporting Kansas City. And that's how Shewe is going to have to hold up. So coming off is Mendy, as well as Freeman. And coming on is Dawson Gully. change for Sporting Kansas City was Mitchell Ferguson change also made for UFA is coming in as James Orson for his ninth appearance of the season and one by Lepley and flying forward is Gully Turns and shoots, but right at Shway. And the chance could be on here, walking along the end line. It's pulled back for Franks, but his shot is blocked. So Orson replaces Ferreira, who went down with that injury, and now steps in to win the ball. Zakaris cuts inside Lennis. Still going Zakaris, but he had to run through Lepley, who wins the free kick. This one forward for Gully. And the header won by Gudino. And Lennis able to get it off the boot of Slavov, but at the expense of a throw in to be taken by Orson. So Orson will get it back for Thomas. So composed on the ball, Riley Thomas. Back to Huth. And Slavov leaves it off. Back into the feet of Slavov. And Gudino will be whistled for the foul after Lepley won the ball. The biggest thing Robin Dixon said about his team is that they bought into the concept of the more you play for others, the more you shine and will get moments to express yourself. And you're really seeing that, that they believe in the process. Even though they're down, they're still not just thumping the ball forward. They're making the smart and the simple passes, trying to build. Especially Slavov in the midfield. You get the ball and look to find open feet rather than just force something. They work their way into the box and smacked clear.
This is Pierre. Orson intercepts. Picks the setup, continues forward. I ran into a slew of sporting KC players as somehow was able to win the throw in. It was a free kick taken along the ground. Zakaris gets it off for Thomas. Thomas drives it into the feet of Huth. Leaves it off for Zakaris. Look. Clearly. Anywho, I'd say if we weren't in SoCal, I'd say it's Thunderstorm. That one played over the head of Colin Thomas, a sporting overtake through Kobe Jones. Now Frank's pressing. The ball swept back to Konecki, who gets it out wide. Hooper, who as things stand, has the game-winning goal for Sporting Kansas City. Thumps this one forward. And Gudino wins the throw and on the far side. Gully somehow almost came away with that. And it's inside for Davis. Running right at the gut of the defense. But Huth was strong in the tackle. Thomas flicks it on for Huth. Orson. And for Zakaris. Put him under a bit of pressure, and who did go off of last? Zukaris, Savlov. Into the channel for Huth. Has only Franks ahead of him. Looks to pick him out, and Krenicki comes out to claim. Throwing into the feet of Franks. It's Pierre hounding him. And he's able to poke the ball away to Lepley. Over to the far side for Goddard. Goddard has Davis making a run forward. Davis is screaming for it. Goddard obliges down the line. Davis catches up to him. Skips by Gudano. Has Gully in the box and Cisnero making his way to the top. But Gudano's persistent pays off as he wins it back. Zakaris is screaming for it over here on the near side. As now it's played over for Orson. Has Zakaris ahead of him? And we'll step play it back for Thomas. Thomas gets it inside for Slavov. Slavov playing it into the gap. Overcooked that pass and it goes out for a throw in for Sporting Kansas City as we head into the 67th minute of play. And up next for Sporting Kansas City will be FC United in two days' time. I'm still trying to hold on to their lead here as Kronecki holds on to that shot. It was a good effort. And testing the wits of Kronecki. Long ball looking for the run of Orson. And this one behind Jones, so it's a chance for UFA to get more bodies forward. Slavov has been so silky with his passing, as has Thomas. 
And it's Sakaris. Orson on the overlap, Huth in support. Side for Slavov. And he played it behind Zakaris. Look at that first touch from Riley Thomas. Not only did he bring it down, but also into the direction that he wanted to go. However, that wasn't his best pass, and now it's sporting to go the other way. And Davis wants to run, and Thomas intervenes. One back by Osvaldo Cisneros. And Huth will be whistled for the foul. So it's Jacob Davis who will serve this in. And this time it's over the head of Hooper. Lepley puts it right back into the mix. And it falls for Gully. And his shot is blocked. And played back to the byline and it's gonna be a corner kick for Sporting Kansas City. It's going to be Davis coming over to take it. Four players in the box, another two hanging out just outside. As Cabrera makes the interception, but it will go out of bounds for the sixth corner kick of the game for Sporting. Hooper and Pierre both up from their center back positions as this one played in, and it's catching practice for Sheaway. Orson, forward for Zakaris. But Zakaris' pressure forces the throw in. Uh, Franks miss hit it. And that's going to be a free kick as Huth brings Lepley down. And now it's going to be a double substitution for United Football Academy. It's getting set to check in is Gide Owujo. And it looks like Huth is coming off. Also coming on is Brian Silva. So Silva replaces Huth. And Zucaris will also exit the game. And on comes Gide Awujo for his 22nd appearance of the season. He has also played and scored for the U18-19s this season, Gide Awujo. Brian Silva, meanwhile, is a 2003 who's up from the U15s, where he had 12 games or 12 goals last year. And Silva will turn 16 on Saturday, so happy early birthday to him. Sporting more than happy to possess the ball, especially with the two to one lead in the 74th minute. 
as this will be a throw in for Orson. One by Cisneros. Gets around Orson. Still going Cisneros. Oh, he's a tricky player, isn't he? But Cisneros able to get by the double team and leave it off for Lennis. And Lennis wins the throw in off of Colin Thomas. So Lennis looking for movement. Lepley, Lennis, Hooper, Jones, long ball looking for the run of Gully, headed clear by Thomas. And it will be another throw in for Sporting Kansas City. As Thomas gets back to try and defend. This is Ferguson, U16, US Youth National Team player. We'll get it back to Pierre, who will give it to his keeper. Oh, and a rough ball for Kronecki. He did well to get his head on it and then just get it out of bounds. Not at all happy with that ball back. The more nervous moments for Sporting Kansas City as we're into the final 15 minutes of match day one. Silva played across. JD gets his head on it and Frank equalizes. The substitutes play their part. As GD Awuchu threaded that one through for Franks, and he slotted it into the far corner. Franks at the double, and UFA are level. Franks with his 15th goal of the season. And now all three points on offer for either team. Gully turns. Maine getting back, Gully muscles him off the ball. Gully weaving his way through. It got by everybody except for Cabrera and then it was swept away by Gudino. What a touch that was though from GD Awushu to play him through. Oh, and that's a heavy late challenge. And it's gonna be the first card of the game. And so the yellow card is given out. Take a look here in the challenge coming in from behind by Danny Goddard who's saying he got the ball. Uh, every time you come from behind and your studs are showing up at the yellow card is gonna come out. Long searching ball, wrestled away from Franks. Main wins the header. Off for Thomas. Slavov, still trying to bulldoze his way through Slavov. And smack clear. It's 
Thomas loops it up in the air, looking for Colin Thomas. Came back from an offside position, so it'll be a free kick for Sporting. 79th minute, and Franks with his second has made it two to two. As this time, Orson wins the free kick. Long ball looking for the run of Franks. And getting there first is Hooper. And it's safety first as he just shepherds it out, ushers it out of bounds rather. Now Franks gets to the byline. Holds up. And wins the corner kick. So it's Slavov who's going over to take the second corner kick of the afternoon for UFA. Slavov's corner, and Thomas just missed it. Cleared to goalie. Has Cisneros to his right. Goddard to his left. And getting back to make the challenge is Gudino. And now that's got to be dangerous play by Franks. Gully quickly sprays it to the far side. Neatly bought down. Awujo doing the defending. And he gets some help from Cabrera, but it's gonna be a corner kick for Sporting now. As we're into the final 10 minutes in Oceanside. There's a high looping ball to the back post. And it will be a sporting throw in. Pierre looking for options. Cisneros. A free kick will go the way of UFA in the 82nd minute. Hooper. Franks is chasing. And one back. Now Franks is off to the races. And getting there first is Mitchell Ferguson. And Ferguson spinning but losing the ball. And now UFA can get more players forward. Sporting Kansas City's U16s qualified for the quarterfinals in 2017 and their U18s in 2016. But it's so important to get three points on the first match day. When only the group winner goes through to the quarterfinals, which will be played on June 25th. Of course, so much of it also depends on what goes on in the match between FC United and Strikers FC as well. Could very well be after the first day that everybody's on one point. Up next for Sporting will be FC United. Well, UFA will play Strikers FC. That match will be on Thursday and then switch those fixtures for Saturday on the final match day of group play. Thomas pops it up, Slavov gets it back to Silva. Double team wins out for UFA. A heavy challenge behind the play, and now the ref's going to bring it back for the foul that was on Orson. Good advantage played by the referee. And free kick quickly taken. Slavov steps into the pocket of space. Slips it out wide. Colin Thomas 
Running at Lennis. Lets to take the inside route. Leaves it off for Maine. Over to the far side for Cabrera. Oh, and Cabrera slipped. Still able to get it off for uh, Wuju. But now the break could be on for Sporting going the other way. Awujo's tracking back. Goddard's going to beat him to it. The two of them battling. And it's Goddard who comes away with it. But he played it behind the run of Kobe Jones. And now it's UFA going the other way. Franks trying to hold his run. Thomas tracks it down. Orson's come in support, but instead it goes into the middle for Slavlov. Slavlov skips past one, skips past two, slips it to Franks. He tries to put it to the back post, didn't get enough on it, and out to smother is Krenecki. Gully chasing. He's in a battle with Thomas. Gully. Helps it on to Lepley. Back to Gully. And stepping in to win it is Silva. Slavov. Changes in the offing for both sides. It'll be a double change for UFA. And a single substitution for Sporting Kansas City at the next dead ball as we're into the final five minutes. And Davis gets his head on it. And Sheway calls off all comers. And now Sheway throws it out of bounds as Dixon is down behind the play asking for a trainer. Or excuse me, Dixon is screaming that Franks is down behind the, the play. And now they can get a trainer on for him. No Sanguinetti getting set to check in for UFA. As is Garrett Gardner. So a chance for both teams to catch their breath and more stoppage time is gonna be added on after the clock hits 90 for this injury. And so Franks who had both goals today has been excellent. Joined this season from the Concord Fire and what an addition he has been for UFA. Now 15 goals and 26 appearances for Franks. Well, Silva has done a good job winning the midfield battle since coming on as a sub. And Franks just having trouble getting off to the sides. Riley Thomas, it's been a picture of calm in the back for UFA. as Alex Umana has checked in for Sporting Kansas City. And the ball sportingly given back to Shewe. Final three minutes plus stoppage time. Two to two between UFA and SKC. Uwujo dispossessed. Zipped into the feet of Umana, gets about wide, looking for the run of Gully. Gully squares up to Orson, sticks a boot in. Gully able to hold on to it. And now Orson dives in. It's going to be a free kick right at the top of the box for Sporting Kansas City. Can SKC retake the lead on the set piece? It's Gully and Davis who are over it. They've already scored off of one set piece. It would be Davis to serve it on, on the right or Gully to have a go with his left. And it is gonna be Gully skipped into the arms of a well-positioned Sheway. Savlov, he's been one of the players of the game, gets it down the line. Oh, 
Headed away by Cabrera. Thomas steps inside of Umana. Now back outside of him. Out uh, for Orson. Slides it in for Awujo. Gide Awujo trying to work his way into the box. Back for Orson in support. He pumps one in. Still around in the box. And battling for it is Gardner. He can't get onto it. And going the other way, Sporting Kansas City. Played forward for Goddard. Goddard looking for the run of Cisneros. Now he's going to hold it up. And Maine takes it off of him. And Maine thrown to the ground. Advantage played as Awusho turns. Places it off to the top of the box for Silva. Who has a go? From 2 0 down, UFA are 3 2 up. And it's the substitute Silva who may have won it late for UFA. And the entire bench ran over to Maine, who won that ball and then got fouled behind the play. But the ref took advantage. And my, did UFA take advantage. Sweetly struck by Silva, kissing it off the post. And a yellow card for taking his shirt off, but he won't mind. Brian Silva, just his second goal of the season, but is a big goal as UFA complete the second half comeback. And is it three goals for all three points, or is there one more sting in the tail in this one? Can SKC find the equalizer? As now Mane has to come off since the trainers had to come on for him. Robin Dixon said that the thing he loved about this team is that they play for each other and you could really see that as the subs went over to celebrate with a man who won the ball all the way on the near touch line and then was fouled for his troubles forward for gully and it's thomas who intervenes who else thomas We are into stoppage time. One minute has elapsed. Thomas has Gully chasing him, and anywhere will do as Riley clears it out of the confines of the stadium. There's going to be four minutes of stoppage time of which almost two minutes has already elapsed. And a free kick. Davis flights it into the box. Cabrera with the header clear, put back in by Cisneros. And it's UFA who are first to it through their captain. And just unable to keep it in. So it's gonna be a throw in for Sporting. Quickly taken to Lennis. Now Goddard has popped up on the near side. He puts in a dangerous ball and a stooping header clear. Cisneros back into the danger area. And Orson trying to shield it out of bounds and the substitute gets the job done. Goal kick for UFA. Sheway launches it into the opposing half. Sent right back in. Finally bought to the ground after a bit of head tennis. Ed Silva, who has the game winning goal as things stand, gets it out wide. Now played into the corner. Uh, instead, Sanguinetti wants to go for glory, plays it across, and it's cleared out for a corner. Well, the bench was screaming for Sanguinetti to take it to the corner. Instead, he turned in and almost got a goal, but they will go to the corner now with the corner kick. Yeah. 
So Savlov, who's been so impressive today, not only with his passing, but his skill with the ball at his feet in tight spaces. And now it's time to hold it in the corner and see if they can run out the clock. I wouldn't take it any further away from the corner than that. United Football Academy complete the comeback as they defeat Sporting Kansas City three to two and take all three points in the first match in Group B. Goddard opened the scoring in the 14th minute for Sporting Kansas City and they look to be in the driver's seat following a header from Hooper on 32 minutes but then Franks started the comeback just before halftime. He grabbed the equalizer on 76 minutes and then on the stroke of full time, Brian Silva popped up with the ball at the top of the box and drove it in off the far post to give United Football Academy three goals for all three points to take them to the top of the table in Group B. Well, that will do it for us today, but a reminder, tomorrow we'll be back with you with Match Day 2 action at the U18-19 level starting at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Pacific as Soccers take on the Philadelphia Union in Group F. And then after that, it'll be the New England Revolution versus St. Louis FC in Group A with a kickoff time of 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. But for now, I'm Mark Zerber saying so long from Oceanside, where it finishes United Football Academy 3, Sporting Kansas City 2.